Florette here with Ink on 3. Thanks for joining me. We are going to have fun and make four easy cards using lots of great products from amazing companies because we are in a really great hop called Spread Joy Not Germs where we're going to be creating cards that will make you smile. So you can see on my desk here I have some Atelier inks, I have some Catherine Pooler inks, they go beautifully together. I also have some Trinity stamps, and I have some Ink on 3 stamps, and then I also have some Heffy Doodle stamps, and we have some stencils. So we're going to have a lot of fun. It's going to be really easy. There's 31 companies and all kinds of designers, so be sure to look below for the link for the blog hop as well. And we're going to get started with our first card. See you in a second. So for our first card, I thought we would start with the hardest one first, but I promise it's very easy. Um, the reason I say it's hard is because a lot of people think of no-line coloring is very difficult. But at here at Ink on 3, we're really known for our no-line coloring and our fade-out ink, which is the original no-line coloring ink. It was specifically designed for this technique, and I guarantee you it is the only ink out there that does what it does and makes the process so much easier. One of the really great things about fade-out ink is it's not actually a color. A lot of people say for a no-line coloring, you just need a light colored ink. Well, the fade out ink is actually completely neutral and there's a multitude of colors in it. It's not gray, it's not tan, and it works with warm or cool colors. I can stamp it once if I want it to be really light, but for on camera, I stamped it three times so that you could see it really well because the lights are very bright in here. But whether I stamp it once or three times or more, depending on my eyesight, it's going to perform the same way. It's very unique in that the formula is also something that's extremely unusual. And you'll see here, as I'm painting on the Atelier Marigold Orange, the lines that I'm going over are going to become the color of the ink that I lay on top. And you'll notice as I'm painting on the marigold orange, the lines are becoming a little bit darker than the area next to it. So you don't want to worry because as it dries, it's going to fade back, hence the name fade out. It's going to lighten as it dries and it's all going to blend beautifully together. So if you're working, don't get nervous if you see the lines getting darker. It's supposed to do that. And it's really doing the work for you and helping the whole process go easier makes it really easy so I can just literally go around my image painting over the lines kind of tracing them with whatever color I want to do and here we're using the marigold orange and I'm kind of just mapping out what I want to do then I'm going to start lightly filling in from the outside in because in this image we're going to kind of do like a darker on the outside and lighter on the inside it's just a really easy way to start no line coloring and it's a lot of fun too, once you get the hang of it. So I'm going around the little bunny and I'm just really mapping it out because what I'm gonna do is let this layer dry and then I'll start shadowing a little bit with just a little bit darker on top of that. I like to start very light and then work my way darker and it just makes the process a lot easier. The other thing that I'm doing is once I lay on a layer of color, I then clean off my brush to the side on my ink off cloth and then I'm going to blend the edges with the water to blend out to a, from a darker to a lighter. And you can see it's already starting to come together. You can already see the lines that I went over in the beginning becoming very orange. They've they're getting lighter and the whole thing is starting to come together. The other thing I wanted to mention, when you are watercoloring like we're doing today using the fade out ink and the Atelier ink to watercolor with, is you want to have good water control. A lot of people, when they have trouble, it's because they're applying too much water. You really want a brush that is just barely damp. Um, the brush I'm using today is the Fine Tip brush pen from Ink on 3 and I love this pen because it has really good water control and you can see today I'm using it with water inside. Sometimes I will use it dry and use it like a regular paintbrush but it has a very fine tip and allows me to work on very small images without flooding water onto my paper. It really gives you great control. You'll also see that I'm leaving a lot of white space and that's going to give you all that great dimension that we're always looking for when we're coloring, whether we're using Copic markers or pencils or watercoloring. You want to have that light to dark 
And so just leaving a little white space in the middle is gonna do that for you. You can see I grabbed a second color. I grabbed the Painted Black Atelier ink. And what's really great about the Painted Black is I dabbed a little on a tile next to me, added a little water, but when I paint with it, I'm gonna get this beautiful light gray. So I can get anywhere from a dark black to a light gray using the Atelier Painted Black. The other thing that it's going to do with the inks were designed to do is when I watercolor with it I'm also going to get some beautiful undertones and you'll see it a little later and you might be able to see a little bit in the tail so far it's have some like peach colors coming out so it's going to give you that professional watercolor look even without being a professional you can get all those beautiful undertones using the Atelier inks. Oh my gosh, look how cute this is looking. And we really have put very little effort into doing it so far. I'm just putting a little bit here and there on the bunny. So it's still a white bunny with some shadows. And you can see I'm adding just a little bit of ink on the outer edges and leaving the white space in the middle. And it really does give you that amazing effect. Very easy to do and it gives you that shadowing and all that fun stuff that we're all trying to do. So I'm just gonna give a little to the ears now and I'll do a little by the foxes here, but you can see the ink grabbing that beautiful gray color. All I'd have to do is swipe it over it using, like I said before, very little water, just a damp paintbrush and you always have your towel to the side so you can dry off your brush a little bit more and your results will get better and better the more you practice. I also wanted to mention that the no line coloring that we're doing right now is in real time. I did not speed it up, so it's a really easy process. You can I wanted you to see how long it actually took me to paint this little guy. Now I did have a couple clips because I walked away a couple times, I got a phone call or someone came to the door. So the other great thing is I don't have to make sure and paint it all at once. I can paint a little bit, go do something else, come back and paint a little more. And I do like to dry it between layers, meaning I'll do the lightest colors first, kind of mapping it out, then I'll let that dry, then I will come back and start adding the deeper tones and just by layering the ink. And you can see here, I actually went outside the line and with the Atelier inks, they're very, very forgiving. And I was able to just dab a little water on there and blend away my little mistake that went outside the lines. Um, so it's very forgiving. The other thing I did want to mention is when you are watercoloring, very important to make sure you use either a mixed media paper or a watercolor paper so that your water is able to move. So if you're using Copic markers or pencils or watercolors, you always want to use the paper that's designed for that purpose. You'll get much better results. And now you can see I just adding just a tiny bit more of the painted black because I want to shadow it a little bit more. And that's what's great about starting light and going dark. You can continually add to it, step away, look at it again later, and you'll see, you know, better what you want to do. Gosh, I think it looks so cute. I also grabbed a little Maryland red and the thing about Maryland red is so cool because it can be really red or really pink, which is like the red of Maryland's lips or the pink of her dress, hence Maryland red. All right, so now we're moving on to the background of our card. Do a little ink blending with some Catherine Puller Lime Ricky. It's a really beautiful, bright green. I love it and we're gonna use it a little later as well. I grabbed the leafy forest stencil and now I'm going to mix it with the Atelier Goddess Green. Um, Catherine Pooler's inks and the Atelier inks work beautifully together. Um, I wanted to ha use her lighter green with our green and you're going to see this great result. So I did the background first with her green and now we're adding the Goddess Green on top and look at that. Look how easy it was to get this really cool background. To keep this card simple and so I decided to take some more Goddess Green and I'm gonna do like a shadow and then I'm gonna put the fox and the little bunny in that shadow area and then I'm gonna grab a really cute stamp from Heffy Doodle because I really wanted to use all my friends products in my cards today um, because we're, we're all about sharing we're all about 
you know, working together and helping each other in these crazy times. So I, as you can see here, I first tried to, and I left that in so you could see it. We, we all do things and there's always a way to fix it. I first stamped it directly on the two, the, the box and the background didn't like it. So then I stamped it on a piece of white paper, fussy cut it out and stuck it on there and stuck the little fox and bunny on and I think it turned out really great. We're going to make our second card using the floral stencil by Ink on 3. And this one is going to be so quick you're not even going to believe how easy this is. It's a lot of fun and it's great because I can make two cards really really quickly and they're going to be really cute. So first I just took my stencil, added some purple tape and stuck it to the cardstock. I'm going to grab some Maryland Red and here again you're going to see I'm just going to use a blending brush. I'm going to blend it over all the flower areas on the stencil with a light touch first. Then I'm going to do a little heavier in the center and we're going to get that really pretty pink and then a darker pink. If we kept going we could get all the way to red. I'm going to grab some Lime Ricky by Catherine Pooler and I'm going to do the leaves and look at that's just such a pretty pretty bright color and this card is also very uplifting and I thought it'd be really nice and bright but look how easy this is we're just we're already halfway done I'm gonna pull that off and I did just the corner and now I'm gonna move my stencil to the opposite corner love this stencil because I can use it straight in the middle of the card I can go around the edges I can do so many amazing things with this one stencil it is just so much fun um, so I'm going to grab a little more Maryland Red, do the same thing to the other side. We're just going to do a nice light touch and then a little bit darker in the center. And that is it. Look at that. Isn't that so cool? I just love it. It's so fun. It's so easy. We were going to get two cards. So I'm going to set this aside for a second. I'm going to take my stencil. It already has all this great ink all over it. I'm going to spritz it with a little water, turn it over, and then grab my ink off cloth and just blot it down and press it into the paper. Remember, I'm also using watercolor paper, or actually it's a mixed media paper for this too, and I will have the link to that in the description. Look at that, we have a second card background, and you're gonna be amazed at how cool this is gonna look when it's dry. So I'm gonna also set that aside to dry. I love how that gives us two backgrounds. It also makes cleaning your stencil a little easier too. Second bonus. All right, so we could have just left this card as it was, but I love splatters. So I grabbed a little of the Paint It Black again, added a little water to it, grabbed my brush and tapped it using some scrap papers to cover up the flowers because I didn't want to get the splatters on those. And look at that. I think it gives it such great dimension. So I'm going to set let that dry and then we're gonna put a sentiment on it. And here we grab the Sending Hugs sentiment. I lost a little footage, um, had already stamped it, so I was just showing you there. And we're gonna use that other background that we got and we're gonna stamp the same sentiment on it. And it's Sending Hugs from the other stamp set and that will be linked in the description below. But look at this, we got two amazing cards, super quick and super easy finish it up I'm just putting some foam tape on the back I put some around the sides and I also did put some in the middle so it doesn't cave in when you mail it and you push it down um, and then I put a little flower and some twine and voila all done and of course added a little liquid pixie dust to the centers and the leaves of the other card and now we have two more great cards so we're up to three cards and here you can see the first one I took a photo of it so you could see it a little better and then the second one the bonus card we got by using just the extra ink from the stencil isn't that so much fun you believe we've already made three cards so now we're moving on to our fourth card so I grabbed some my jam purple and some all that jazz from Catherine Pooler and I just smushed them onto a tile, spritzed a little water, and we're doing some ink smushing. Look at that beautiful background we just got. We're going to get two today, but really I could probably get four out of it, but, but for the sake of the video, we just did two. And then I took a ink off cloth, blotted off some of the sides to get some of the excess water that was pooling, and then I'm going to dry them. And when I dry it, I'll usually dry the front, then flip it over and dry the back. 
If you get a little curling, you can do this here where you just bend it one way and then the other. They're not beautiful. So now I'm grabbing a Trinity stamp, link in the description. I heat embossed it with some strawberry champagne embossing powder from Ink on 3. It's ultra fine and got all that beautiful detail from that stamp. And then we just pop down a sentiment and voila, we have our fourth card. Now that one was really easy. And look at how beautiful it turned out. With just a couple easy steps, another great card. So in a short amount of time, we were able to make four great cards to put a smile on someone's face. Since we can't go see them now, sending something is the next best thing. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you'll give it a try and be sure to look in the link below for the blog hop to go and see all the other amazing projects that everyone has created for you. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks. Bye-bye.